Hello everyone, uh, welcome back again to uh, the next lecture. Uh, this is the second lesson of Unit 3, uh, Perfect Squares and Cubes. So uh, we're going to take something that we probably know a little bit about and we are going to use the methods that we learned in the past two uh, videos to prove that numbers are perfect squares or perfect cubes and uh, like we can do this for any number uh, no matter how large um, when usually if we try to do it in our head uh, I personally go up to about 15 uh, and no higher so we can do it for um, large large numbers um, so perfect squares and perfect cubes uh, a perfect square is the product of two equal factors so you can imagine that I've got a box here uh, the perfect square one is equal to what number times what number gives us one has to be itself well one squared right those are the two equal factors um, the next number up that I know that has a uh, that is a perfect square is four four is a product of two times two or two squared nine is the product of three squared uh, 16 is the next one that is 4 squared and I can go up to in my head as I said about 15 squared I know is 225 but there's a whole bunch of numbers in between when I start to get to numbers larger than 225 um, I start to have some trouble uh, this gets even quicker when I talk about perfect cubes um, so some perfect cubes that I know. One is again one times one times one. That is itself multiplied by itself three times. So one to the power of three is equal to one. Um, the next number up is eight. That is two times two times two. Uh, so the power of three. That is a three. I'll scratch that out. Two to the power of three. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 again is 8. Uh, the next one up is 27, and that is 3 to the power of 3, which is 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 again is 27. And I believe 64 is the next one. Uh, that would be 4 to the power of 3. Um, so when we start to get to larger numbers, we want to have a method for determining um, the, if a number is a perfect square or a perfect cube. So the rule is that if you can make two equal groups of numbers, then it's a perfect square. And if you can make two equal groups, um, it's a perfect cube. Now we're talking about after you've done the prime factorization tree. So if you're writing a number as its set of prime factors, you can make those into equal groups of two or three. They correspond to perfect squares or perfect cubes. I'll show you an example with one that we know. So it's familiar. We're going to do 36 first. So 36 can be broken down um, by a factor tree. So that'd be 6 times 6 is 36. And then to get 6, 2 times 3 and 2 times 3. So I can say that 36 as a set of prime factors is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. Now I can split that up so that I can make two groups that are exactly the same. If I put these two numbers in the first bracket, 2 times 3, and I put these two numbers in the second bracket, 2 times 3, that is two equal sets. So that means that 36 is a perfect square. If you want to know what number is making that 36 when you multiply by itself. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 6 equals 36. So uh, two, uh, there's a line at the bottom right underneath there. Uh, two equal factor groups, therefore 36 is a perfect square with the square root of 6. Okay, so we can write that in a couple of different ways um, you know we could find the greatest common factor with another set using these um, but 
This is an easy way to find out if a number is a perfect square or a perfect cube. Let's do a larger number. And the sentence that we need to fill in for this one is actually on the next page, just so you're aware. But uh, let's do 1296. The first thing we need to do is make a factor tree so that we can find the prime factors for 12. What's the number? 1296. So let's do that. <clears throat> Um, so I believe when I was doing this one, I wasn't a hundred percent sure what, um, I wanted to do, um, to like divide it by first. So I just started working with my calculator and I found out that I could divide this by four. So four can be broken into two and two and it was four times 324, which is still a large number, but definitely getting workable. Uh, I decided to divide that by two. Um, so 324 divided by 2 is 162. can divide that by 2 again to get 81. And now I'm on a roll because 81 is 9 times 9. And each of those break down into two threes. So that's a really actually quite large factor tree. Um, let's write out our numbers here and see if we can put them in any type, type of pattern. So, uh, 1296, it's got prime factors. I've got one, two, three, four twos, and four threes. So two times two times two times two times three times three times three times three. So I'm going, I see that I've got four of each, which that looks good for me. If I can bring in these two and these two threes, I can write this as two times two times three times three. And I can take what's left over there, one, two, and the two threes. We get two times two times three times three. So those are two equal um, brackets, two equal amounts. It can be broken into two um, equal parts. So that means that this is a perfect square. Now, what number makes this multiplied together? Well. 2 times 2 is 4, times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36. So it's 36. 36 times 36, if you were to check, gives you 1296. So 36 squared is equal to 1296. 1296 is a perfect square. Let's do another one. Let's do a couple more, actually. Let's do 1,000. So we can do this factor tree fairly quickly. We have 1,000. And I'm going to divide a 0 off of it, let's say. So we've got 10. And 10 times 100 would get us 1,000. I know that this breaks down into 5 and 2. And then I can do 10 times 10 to get 100. And again, we're breaking down 10 into the 5 and 2, which is the same every time. We can then write out this as a set of prime factors. So 2 times 2 times 2, 1, 2, 3, 2's, times 5 times 5 times 5, that's 3 5's. I can see now that I can break that up into 2, or maybe, no, not 2 equal parts. That would be 3 equal parts. 2 equal parts is impossible. If I was to try to break that up, I would end up with or the wrong number of twos and fives in one of the brackets. But if I take two and a five and put it into one, and I take a two and a five and I put it into another, and I take a two and a five here and I put it into another, that's three equal parts. Uh, let's do this. So two and five go there. We know what two and five equal. That's 10. Let's see, we've got this two and this five. We know that that equals 10. That's good. And then we have this 5 and this 2. 2 times 5. And that equals 10. So we can break it up into three equal parts, all of them equaling 10. That means that 10 times 10 times 10 is 10 to the power of 3. And we, if we do that into our calculator, 10 times 10 times 10, we would get 1,000. And we should be kind of familiar with that already that 10 to the power of 3 is 1,000. So it works even if we, even with ones that we know. Um, let's try another one. 
1728 is our next one. Okay, that strikes me as a little bit difficult to factor, make our prime factor tree. Uh, let's just start by, it's an even number, so let's divide it by two. Uh, if I take that and I divide it by two, let's see what I would get. I'd get 14 on the end. What number would get me there? No, it would be, um, let's see, 800 and then 64 would get me there, 64. I can again divide that by two, 343. I can no longer divide that by two. Um, let's see. Pardon me. This should be a four. This would be a two then, and I can continue. Um, I can divide that by two to get 216. And now I know that this is divisible by eight. I don't know why I know that, but I'm familiar with that. Uh, it is eight and 27. 4 and 2 for an 8, and then 2 times 2, 9 and 3, 3 and 3. So that is quite a large factor tree. It gets larger and larger um, as you um, only divide by a small number, like 2 each time. If we were to keep doing that, it would go really, really far. So it was a good thing I saw that 8 was here. Um, so let's write this out as a set of prime factors. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six twos. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six twos, and one, two, three threes. So I can break that up into three equal parts. I can pull two twos and a three and make that into different brackets. So let's do that. 2 times 2 times 3 is here. We've got 2 times 2 times 3 and 2 times 2 times 3. So that means that it's a perfect cube, but what number is it when cubed gives us 1728? Well, 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. So that means 12 cubed would be the number. Uh, 12 cubed gets us 1728. Uh, there is, let's see, two here to do on your own. Uh, you want to determine if they are perfect squares, perfect cubes, or sometimes uh, they can be both. So um, give that a try, pause it here, and when you're done, come back. Okay, uh, let's give it a go. Let's see if we can break these down into proper groups. Um, what color should I, I feel like using blue. Let's do that. So, 1764 this time. This is awfully close to our 1728, but not quite. Uh, let's go, let's divide this by two. Uh, we've got 882, let me divide that by two. Let's do that again. Two and 441. Um, let's see, 49 and nine. We multiply that together. 9 is 3 times 3, and 49 is 7 times 7. So I've gotten to my prime factors. This is a little bit of a tricky one. If I hadn't done it already, that would have taken me some time. Um, but 441 is broken up into 49 and 9. Definitely check that in your calculator. Um, let's write this as a set of prime factors. I've got 1, 2, 2s. Two, so I've got 2 3s, and I've got 2 7s. So 2 times two, times three, times three, times seven, times seven. So it looks to me like I could pull one of these for each and make three equal sets. So I could go two times three, no, there'll be two equal sets if I pull one of each, right? So I've got two of each one, two times three times seven, and then two times three times seven. I can't break that up into threes in any way. Uh, there's only one of each. So if I want to find out what number uh, squared gets me 1764, I will multiply this. So let's try 3 times 7 is 21, and then doubled, 21 doubled is 42. So that means 42, and this is 42, that means 42 squared. 42 squared equals 1764. We can check that, no problem. Let's do 2744. Um, 
so the last two digits are 44. Uh, I know that 44 is divisible by 4. So I know this is divisible by 4. So let's do 4 and check in my calculator. I get 686. I know that 4 can be broken up into two twos. So that's done like that. Um, we can then, let's divide this whole thing by 2. So that's 686. And then we divide that by 2 to get 343. 343 um, is divisible by 7. And I know that because I'm familiar with 7 cubed. 7 times 7 times 7 is 43. It's just a number that jogs my memory. So I go 7 times 7 times 7 is 49. That's a prime factor. And 7 times 7 can be written there. Uh, so those are all prime factors. I can then write that as a set of prime factors. I've got 1, 2, three twos and one, two, three, seven. So two times two times two, and then seven times seven times seven. Should be able to break that up into three parts because I've got one of each uh, in each bracket. So two times seven, two times seven, and two times seven. Two times seven is 14. That is true for all of these, which means that 14 cubed would get me 20. Uh, 744 and you can check that in your calculator no problem um, so there you have it um, if, you, if you got the question wrong definitely you know rewind the video and see where what happened uh, we can now use this to solve a problem I'm gonna see if I can adjust the light here I can okay there we go that's a little better um, we're going to now solve a problem um, about a cube. So we have a cube, and yes, I'm going to draw it. Let's see. Uh, the cube, I'm going to draw a square. I'm going to draw lines back the same length and straight down. This should not have been so long. Uh, should have been more straight across. But there you have it, a cube with a couple of tails. No big deal. And it tells us that the volume of this cube, the volume of this cube is 3375 centimeters cubed. It wants to know what the surface area of the cube is. So when we talk about surface area of a cube, um, that would be, surface area would be, this has six sides. I and mean, you can't see three of the sides, but they're there. Um, so it would be 6 multiplied by one of the sides area, which would be, if this is a cube, they'd be the same side. So that would be like length squared, right? Six, the length squared would give us one side area, and then we would multiply by 6 to get the whole thing. So the only thing I need to know to find out what the surface area is, is what the length is. Right? And I know that volume would be equal to the length cubed. Right? If this is a cube, they're all the same length. Um, what number would get us 3375 when it's cubed? Um, we can use prime factorization of this number to find out what its perfect cube is and then find out what our length is. Right? Because our length is one of those cubes. Let's do this. 3, 3, 7, 5. I can definitely uh, divide it by 5 because it ends in a 5. So let's do that. 5 and what number? 675. Handy. This also ends in a 5. So let's do it. Divide that by 5. We get 135. Can't get any more convenient, especially because 5 is a prime number. 5 divided by, so that would be, let's see, 27. Oh no, I'm almost running out of room. But 27, 9 times 3 gets us 27. And then 9 can be written as two threes. I apologize for um, the cutoff at the bottom. Um, so now I can write 3, 3, 7, 5 as its prime factors. So let's do that. We have 1, 2, 3, threes and 1, 2, 3, fives. 3 times 3 times 3 times 5 times 5 times 5. I can see that I can break that down into three groups um, of equal value. 
we could have three times five in one of them, three times five in the next, and three times five in the last. I took one three and one five from each of these, and I broke that up into three equal sets. So this is a perfect uh, cube. What value is it? Well, three times five is 15. So that means that 15 cubed gets us um, three, three, seven, five, which means that the length, you can't see that, so I'm going to show it to you. So that means that the length is equal to 15. Now, we know that the surface area formula is up here. All we need to know is the length to find the surface area. Length squared times six gives us the surface area. So let's do that. Uh, the surface area is equal to six times 15 squared. 15 squared is 225. Uh, and then you multiply that by six. So six times 225 equals 1350. And that's centimeters squared because we're talking about a surface area. So that's kind of a fairly common problem. Um, when we talk about a cube, it is very easy to go from volume to surface area, surface area to volume because the side length is the same for each. So it is very convenient um, when you're doing those problems, look out for that. Um, there's lots of work for you to do and then I believe uh, we have a quiz or an assignment. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. But thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon, I hope.